Welcome back to another edition of Ask America Anything. Hi, I am Ayush from Janakpuri, Delhi. I wanted to ask you why Indian food couldn't become as big as Thai, Chinese, and Italian food in the U.S. Well, that's a great mm. question. Why is that? Um, okay, so that's interesting. Chinese, Chinese food delivers, so maybe that would be a way Indian food could break in. Right. Delivery. Well, and and in India, I mean, it's kind of used to that. In Delhi, I mean, you yeah. delivery stuff all the time. I know, right? Everything delivered. But here, if you want delivery to your house, you have to pretty much choose pizza or Chinese food. Yeah. At least for our area. For our area. Again, smaller Again, city. Again, small city. There was always a Chinatown. Like in any big city, there's always been mm-hmm. Chinatowns. Right. Because, and, yeah. And so over time, they developed, I think, something that was more palatable to Western taste, you know, kind of modified version of Chinese food. Chinese immigrants have been part of America for a very long time. Italians as well. Right. And well, yeah. Now, and Thai, it, not so much. Not so much. But yeah, Thai is more new, at least in our area. So I don't know. People get scared for some reason. They get scared by Indian food. Like, oh, it's going to be spicy. And oh, it's got all those weird flavors that I just don't know. So I'm not, I'm not sure why Americans are so scared of Indian. And I don't know if you live in a big city. What about in your area? I mean, I feel like whenever an Indian restaurant has been around, I hear Americans talking good about it. So it just doesn't seem to, I don't know, quite just quite get the foothold that it needs but yeah in a big city if you've recognized some indian places that do well i mean the the place we saw in tallahassee was doing good they had good mm-hmm. yeah they were, they were doing i'd good. say half the people maybe over half the people that came in were not indian right so that's good what can americans learn from indians apart from spirituality and close family bar- bonds the heart a lot we can all learn a lot from each other I guess the two things that I think of is from my friend Arun, <laughs> like two experiences with my friend Arun. One is Jugar. I think uh, Americans, especially as we get more uh, comfortable just learning from being able to bootstrap in a uh, low resources scenario. I mean, there are a lot of Americans that are still good at that, but they generally either come from the military or they've worked in construction or something like that. And there's just fewer and fewer of those in the broader population, especially in urban areas. So you get a lot of people just who don't know how to handle stuff without somebody's, you know, expertise or some some specialist coming in and doing it. Um, so Jugar, I think, honestly, I know Indians probably get tired of hearing that, but I just witnessed it so many times in India where someone would solve a problem in just a very ingenious way that didn't need, you know, a lot of overhead. Uh, so that's one thing. And then another thing, my friend Arun, like he... Ah, just this ability to, and this is, you know, him in particular, but I have noticed this in India, just an ability to kind of de-escalate situations. This guy drove into my buddy, uh, Jake. Just drove into him in the parking lot, like ran right into it. And Jake got so mad. I mean, the guy was going like two miles an hour. Uh, but Jake got so into. mad and slammed the car so hard. And so Arun, like, ended up being just like this middleman, like just keeping it calm and, you know, just keeping the peace. We need a third option. We don't need to go straight to litigation or violence. And I've witnessed quite a few times where Indians have come in and and, and intermediated a situation. It's like, hey, it's not the end of the world, you know. And it's not the end of the world, a lot of these things. So uh, I think we could use a little more tiko jaiga. Yeah, like, that's a good way of putting it. Yeah, I mean, we I, I could use a little more chill. It's all going to work out. Be flexible, go with the flow. We could use a little bit more of that. Do you guys believe in reincarnation? And is there a possibility of you two having a connection with India in previous lives? I've never really thought of myself as believing in reincarnation. So no, but it would be a really fabulous, someone wanted to make a comic book about us having a (laughs) connection in a previous life to India. I would love that. That would be so awesome. (laughs) That does sound like a uh, a good story. Um, yeah, I don't believe in it. However, I have some interesting thoughts about it. Maybe for a Ford rant at some point. Uh, one of my favorite authors. Friday, Friday, Friday. Uh, my favorite authors is George MacDonald. He was uh, he wrote fantasy. Uh, it's a Scottish ex pastor. The church couldn't handle him because he was too weird. So he started writing books. And a lot of the modern fantasy that we have from. Game of Thrones to Lord of the Rings, loosely inspired from his kind of uh, re-pioneering this storytelling method. Like he took old fairy tales and he and he just took it in a very different direction. And he has some really like 
interesting things. So I'll talk about that for Grant one time. Yeah. Um, it's almost like, I almost feel like he read a little bit about Hinduism, read some Darwin, because it was about, he was about uh, contemporary of Darwin just a little after, and he came up with this really interesting philosophical belief that he wasn't necessarily saying it was true, but he was saying it was mythically true, which, you know, I don't know, it's kind of interesting. What is the truth, both practical and spiritual, meaning of money for you guys? The true meaning of money. To pay the bills. <laughs> Practical. So she's the practical one. Um, I, for the longest time, thought of money as there's a Bible verse that is often misquoted in Christian circles. Money is the root of all evil, but that's a mistranslation. It's not money is the root of all evil. It's the love of money is the root of all mm. evil. And so a lot of Christians, even still, will take that and be like, oh, yeah, see, businessmen, they're greedy, they're evil. Like, And, and I used to have this very an antagonistic attitude towards businessmen because I was like, oh, they're just greedy. They just want money. Uh, and now that I've lived, you know, 36 years and seen how it's used by people who are more well off than me and have been very responsible with it and realize, oh, that guy's not greedy. He's actually extremely generous with his money. I don't know. It's changed my perspective on it a lot. I think money is just a tool that we use to establish trust. It just reveals a lot about what's in a person's heart. You know, it's a good thing. I don't think it's a necessary evil. I think it's actually a good thing. I'd I'm trying like to like some more of it. <laughs> I'm trying to learn, learn more about it. Um, there you go. Well, here you go. You can also talk about cryptocurrency. Yeah. That can be a Friday rant. So, I kind of surprised so it didn't someone make it asked, into last yeah, Friday. Yeah, well, somebody asked me a question a while back about you know Bitcoin and New World Order or whatever. And when I mm. I hadn't even read anything on it. Well, since then I've read, read a, a ton, and uh, I'm looking at a career change now. So software, here we come. A little late, but better late than never. All right, they, they call me Dank with a, a buttload of questions here as well. How did you actually feel when a stranger asked you for a selfie out of nowhere in India? It's always awkward when people ask. No, now, okay, for sure. If awkward. it's a stranger. Now, if it was somebody who knew us through the YouTube channel, yeah, then we were great. like, oh, Fantastic. yeah, cool. Fantastic. That's wonderful. But so strangers, one, I get you. in our American Indian, the movie, our friend Celeste came to visit and we were in... Taj Mahal. Yeah, we were in Agra and we got so many people kept asking to take pictures with us and I love her thing that she says. She talks about like, now I know what it feels like to be a celebrity, but I don't have all the money that goes with it. And so I think that stands like they're, like they're looking at us. They're going to come ask to take a picture with not, them and we would like get up and like yeah, totally we're, just, we're lower middle class by American standards. We're not anything to be like... <laughs> so it was awkward. If it was a viewer, loved it. Right. In those cases, the selfies out of nowhere cases that they didn't know us. It was like positive racism, basically. They saw a white skin. They're like, oh, he must be a diplomat or he must be a celebrity. You know, I'm like, no, we're just nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Especially back then because we didn't have any like subs or anything. Right. Point. Do you have any projects planned similar to Bart's Chai Stand and Checklist? Well, no. I've tried numerous times to start some short stories. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I feel like in our building a better me thing that we're trying to build, that'll come in eventually. The creative side of me will come in eventually. But I've kind of just choked it. <laughs> like every time I try to write something, I just, it just, does, I don't like it. Um, I do have Bart's Chai Stand as a short story. So I probably will release that, um, you know, just as a Google Doc. And anyone wants to read it, they can read it. Um, I actually recorded, like, I read the whole thing out. Um, but I, anyways. <laughs> Hmm. Uh, again, like I've tried these things. I'm just not really happy with it. So yeah, I might just share that as a Google Doc. How do people react when you tell them that you've hosted Comic Con India? Uh, with blank stares. With blank stares. Yeah, they don't, they just don't really, they're like, oh, well, he can't mean like Comic Con India. He means like. Most people, not most people, a good amount of people don't even know what Comic Con is or the. Or they don't care. Or the significance I guess. They just of don't it. Really realize how and, influential it is it's like yeah. oh yeah you know thor ragnarok is going to make more money than any movie this year you know that that that's kind of a big deal i don't know so, yeah comics what are those kind of like people are like video games what are those why do we still have video games is the war with the pigeons still on no oh. thankfully we don't have many of them you actually do find them on the beach i think they they like the piers that go out into right. the water but no don't see them anymore no yeah. oh thank what do you plan to prepare in the pressure cooker? Except dal makhani. Chole, rajma. There you go. Those things. But that's going to be it for now. <laughs> we did find the ingredients. Is that correct? Yes, we did. We got the we got the correct type of lentil. So we are going to make it today. Oh, no, we'll do it. We'll do we it. said we were going to do that no, yesterday. We're gonna do no, we're going to do it. We're going to do it this week. You'll see some vlog footage. What's the best thing you like about Thailand except Panda? Ah, man, you, you know, know me. Ford. Here's the thing. 
coming from Delhi, the best thing about Thailand was the lack of pushiness. It was just, okay, step back, take a breath, you get a break from the pushiness of Delhi. It, it does feel kind of like walking into a Buddhist monastery so when you, you walk just, into, even into Bangkok in comparison. Now, once you get on the streets of Bangkok, that's a different story. But especially when you get out into like uh, Chiang Mai, they don't, what do you say? Like, they don't notice foreigners as much. I don't know. As a foreigner, you just fit in. Yeah. Well, and so, I think it is just because there is such a, it has such been such a, a tourist huge hub. Such a tourist boom. For a long yeah, time. Yeah. And so, and you've got so many expats who have chosen to settle there as well. And so being white skinned in Thailand, you didn't feel like you stuck out like a sore thumb. So those were, the, for, for me, that was why I went to Thailand. Right. Well, I went because... India made me cross the border every six months. That's the real reason. Yeah. That's the real reason I went to Thailand. But also I liked it because it was just kind of a break from the pushiness and the standing outiness. Thailand is not some place we'd actually like to live. Mm -mm. Um, the Thai culture is just, it's just very different, you know, and every place has its pros and cons. Mm -hmm. And so one of the difficulties with Thailand is you, you everyone seem, it's very polite, you know, but to actually get to know somebody takes a very long yeah. time and you and, and as I an love, outsider you yeah. might not necessarily And that's actually not get to know I them. love India. I mean, it can still take a long time to get to know someone. I don't know. It's just different. Love India. But yeah, Thailand's great. Uh, I wouldn't live there though. Nope. Great place to vacation. And that's why I always say. How and where are inhales? <gasps> I'll be Roger. Ali, Anna, Dave, Arun, Becca, Kevin, Noble Luke, Rachel, Trisha, and the others I missed who you especially want to tell us about. Aw. Well, well, I don't know where Abhi Raj is. I'm not sure where Abhi Raj is. Abhi Raj, where are you? Where are you? Uh, Allie and Trisha are both in Colorado. Trisha's gotten married. Uh, Anna and Dave still in Delhi. They are about to head back to Canada, though, for uh, a year. Then they'll be back in India. Arun? I got a message from him a few months ago on... Well, it might have been right when we started this, actually. But he was using someone else's Facebook account. I didn't know it was him. And I was like, oh, it's Arun. I was like, oh. And we actually had a little conversation in, in Broken Hindi. So Arun. So it went okay. So, hey. So, uh, Where are you? We need to do a little. I did, we need, I Yes, we actually yeah. need to do a Skype. Yeah, we with do. With some of these people. And that could be part of our India connection, being getting back in yeah. touch. Definitely want to talk to Kevin again. I kind of want to do dad and daughter with Kevin. Oh, like, maybe that should man. just be it. Maybe dad, Kevin. daughter, and, and Kevin. Kevin. The funnest time playing that stupid Five Nights at Freddy's with Oh, me. my gosh. Becca, I see her sometime on Instagram. So she's still in the UK. Right. And I, I haven't seen her on YouTube. So, so I don't know she's yeah. I ha and I haven't checked out her videos, but I follow Noble, her on Instagram. Noble Luke is hosting Comic-Con hey, still. Hey, yeah, huh? yeah. Yeah. So he had Hyderabad. And then I saw this past weekend he, there was Comic-Con Bangalore. So he's, he's still hosting them. He's killing it. Uh, Rachel. Rachel is actually working in D.C. now. So she's up in the capital. That, that, there you go. That covers the list. Where were you when you first heard of the attacks at 2611? What was your reaction? A question by Singh Shashi. As an American, I only know 9-11. Uh, 2008, okay. I would have lived in Florida. So we were still in America. Uh, Melissa doesn't pay attention to news in on any continent, so she didn't know about it. Uh, I do remember seeing about it. So I remember someone being interviewed on the streets saying... And this was just shocking to me. Them saying, in America, they've done a lot since two th um, since nine eleven to prevent this kind of stuff, and we need to take those kind of steps here. We should this shouldn't have happened. And I just was like, like, oh, wow, someone actually said we did something right. Like that was just weird to hear it come from someone else's mouth. Not to say that I necessarily agree with the patriotic Patriot Act and all that it entails. <laughs> So Ganesh had a question. This is a very in-depth question. Do you think that hell or heaven was created by humans just to inject fear in people's minds and give this idea that there's some meaning to life? If there is no hell or heaven, is there purpose? I think in many times hell and heaven have been used definitely for that very thing. Definitely. Um, I've, used, I've seen it. been used to strike fear in the hearts right. of people. I've seen it in Christianity all the time. You know, I think Hinduism, again, there's, there's such a broad range of of understanding from reincarnation to what actually happens like when the reincarnation cycle ends like is it uh, a cessation of consciousness or is it some sort of form of heaven i think practically and theologically these things differ depending on the person this notion has been around 
uh, a long time. And it is hard to say, like, what, you know, is it just a wish fulfillment dream? You know, that's what Marx or Nietzsche or, or uh, any skeptic would say. It's just a wish fulfillment dream that humans are just hoping that we, that this isn't all there is. Um, so there's got to be something better. Rust Cole line from True Detective, where he says, you know, if something along the lines of if you are only trying to be a good person so that you get out of hell, then you're a piece of something like that. Hmm. And I think religious people actually should agree with that, to be honest. I think religious people should, whether or not there is heaven, goodness, righteousness, justice, generosity, grace, mercy, like if, if you're not willing to go to hell for those things, like put yourself in hell uh, so that someone else doesn't have to be, like that's that's what true religion should actually look like, and we see that replayed over and over in movies. I, Marvel movies come to mind, ironically, like spoilers. But the end of Avengers, Tony Stark takes the nuke into this, you know, black hole or whatever, and this expecting rift, not to come expecting back. Expecting not to come back. Like that's what true religion should look like. Uh, Doctor Strange at the end of Doctor Strange goes to this god of destruction or whatever. And he basically locks him, does bluffs, right. says, I'm going to, you know, enters into an agreement with the guy. Like, I've got this little thing that can relive this moment over and over right. for eternity. Right. So, and like commits, like, I will just relive this moment over and over in order to. I will go through eternal torment. For the better. So that other people will not have better, to yeah. serve you. Right. And if that ain't religion, I don't know what is. So, like, that should be the ideal. The ideal should not be running to heaven you know, and to try to escape the crap of life, the idea should be diving into the crap of life to make it more like heaven. And I, you know, I've just seen it too often in Christian circles where it is that first thing. It's just like, we're just going to get out of here and just leave everything to crap. And, uh, so long, see you later. No use polishing brash and sinking ship. And that I, attitude is kind of pervasive and I don't like it. So, uh, so I think every belief system kind of struggles with that. This is a deep question. It's, it's, yeah. It's deep. And we have always appreciated art. Art and storytelling for the truth that it can share. And if you look back, what makes good art? You see these arch archetypes yep. appear again and again. Yep. This like... If you are just living for yourself and making yourself happy, but not harming others... Is that really bringing fulfillment to you? So, I mean, think about the movies you like to watch or the stories you like told. They all have where you're doing something for the greater good, even though it's not necessarily going to benefit you. Right. And yeah, greater good. You have to be careful how you greater define good. that. But, uh, but, you know, you think like, and, and this shows up throughout all cultures, almost all cultures. I mean, there are certain cultures that, you know, take a wrong turn and like start okay. in incentivizing villainy. You could say it that way. Even back like in some of these Greek myths, you think of uh, Prometheus, like he gives human beings fire and then he's, as punishment, he's tied to this rock and disemboweled every day by this giant eagle. Like, again, that, that kind of idea of a suffering servant who's willing to go through hell to defend the powerless or to, you know, to like that I idea, that to me is what real religion is supposed to look like. And I think the world has been a better place because of that application right. of it and there doesn't yeah. always work out i mean for us on earth as human beings there is some reason for work and there is some reason for bettering the lives of those around you i mean people who look at people who live for themselves do, are they really happy people right. very deep question yeah though. Ganesha. It's a big one. i hope some part of that makes sense so this was a funny one uh Good idea here by Ripuri. We had actually kind of thought about this at uh, previous times. He was saying, I'm not sure how posting U.S. diplomatic missions are obtained, but I'm just throwing this out there, even if it's a wild idea. He says we'd be good U.S. ambassadors. No, I, I, when we were in Delhi and trying to figure out of our visa situation and how we were going to come back, I actually did consider this for myself. Like if I got a position with the embassy there... <laughs> So from SR Dal, why why do Americans use wine in recipes? In India, we try to cook some American dishes, but most of us fail in getting the wine used because it's either not available or too expensive. That's a good question. I do believe this is this comes from French and Italian. Mm. I believe. Yeah, French yes. influence. Probably French a lot influence of French influence and Italian yeah. influence using red and white wines and mm. cooking because actually 
I don't ever make anything that <laughs> requires wine and cooking because I'm not fancy. But you can blame France for that so, one. So that's my guess. We won't take responsibility for that but yes. innovation. Encyclopedia. Hey, Ford, I've been watching videos for the past four to five years. Fellow Noiden. All right. Hello, Noida. Um, so he brings up the point about Delhi's public transport for using CNG, and that was because of the government that brought made that possible. Mm -hmm. uh, uh oh. So. Uh, I was praising the government on accident because the government made it happen. Oh, shoot. Ford, as an idea guy, he never wants to think that he's praising anyone's government. Ugh. He's um, a rebel. So what are your views about the fact that Democrats keep on ranting about global warming and the GOP openly refuses that global warming is taking place? What's the GOP? Oh, my God. <laughs> are, you, are you serious right now? It's, it's some group. It's some, some group, yeah, kind of a group. Okay, well, what did he just refer to? The Democrats keep on ranting about global warming. And the GOP. The uh, GOP. So they must be Republicans. Yes, it's the Republican Party. You don't know the GOP is the Republican Party? I'm like, GOP, <laughs> some group of wow. government people. Man. The GOP. Yeah, I don't believe in climate change. I'll just come out and say it. I'm a climate change denier. So uh, unsubscribe. <laughs> If you hate me now, I be I don't know. I, don't believe, I believe that we should take care. Oh, I believe in the stewardship of, of the, the environment. The stewardship of the environment. Yes. Yes, I believe that we should try to find new ways of tackling yes. these problems. I think government regulations, rather than helping in general, the the CNG thing. Even after CNG, let's look at Delhi air pollution. The regulations, in my opinion, actually don't help. It's technology that ends up helping in the end. And I think a lot of these regulations actually keep oil in power, not disempower them. And that's one of right. my problems with it, all this stuff is, is that lobbyists, once you get regulations, ro lobbyists can get in there. These big companies find ways around it and they just further entrench their power. It doesn't work the way we think it does. One last thing before I'm we go. I'm laughing at this name, Mango Unchained. That's hilarious. So Mango Unchained has been following me on Twitter for a long time. He asked this question on the Indie Connection subreddit as well. Thank you, sir. We'd really like to hear your views on this postmortem for every frame of painting. They wrote this really long post. Great post. If you're interested in doing anything on YouTube, read this. Qu required reading. So he's the one that did video essays about uh, films and about ed editing, cinematography, style. I have nothing but good things to say about every frame of painting. If you're interested in cinematography, filmmaking, editing, any of those things, this team right here, these two people who made this for the last couple of years, uh, have made a, a great resource for anyone looking to, uh, it's college level material, better than what you get in college, better than reading a book because you can actually see it in action. Uh, fantastic style. It's actually entertaining. Uh, it's, it, is not as pretentious as a lot of these video essay channels can be, I feel like, personally. Um, I feel like they kind of have set the tone for what video essay channels should be. So nothing but good to say about them. Subscribe, watch all that they've made. They're not going to make any more, um, but I think they've done a great public service, to be honest. So uh, How long were their I they would range. Video. I mean, it could be five to twelve minutes. Um, but no, we'll we'll watch some of because I, honestly, you will be entertained. It's not boring mm -hmm. stuff. Like you like movies, so mm -hmm. I mean, and he would analyze all kinds of stuff from Jackie Chan to Looney Tunes to Snowpiercer. I mean, it, he ran the gamut of like indie art films and international films to more mainstream things. So I think they did a great job. And this blog post, thank you for you know letting me know about this because this blog post is a masterclass in understanding how a lot of things work on YouTube and about content creation itself. Uh, and it's very revealing. Like he sounds like me. He would just come home ranting for a year about his job as a video, as a film editor and about how much he hated his boss and stuff like that. And so finally, um, I'm not sure if they're a couple, but she told him, I don't want to hear about it anymore. Why don't you do something about it? Make something creative instead of complaining about it, which is exactly what we try to do. Be create, you know, creative and constructive. So they made something creative and constructive out of his angst and it produced probably one of the best things on YouTube. Um, so thanks a lot, Mango Unchained, for that link. Um, and today, we did want to mention Shashi Kapoor died today. Uh, so just wanted to 
condolences to the family. Now, I think a lot of times when a celebrity dies, there is this kind of like, why do we make such a big deal? But, you know, these people, they we kind of see them almost as a reflection of ourselves. Uh, and, you know, they might even serve as a reminder of people we've lost along the way. You know, we watched a movie with a, a grandparent or something like that. And so from Divar, the famous scene with him and Amitabh, where he says, you know, I have bank balance, uh, money, cars, properties, etc. So what do you have? Mary Pass. Ma. Uh, so I was thinking, here's my su suggestion for the India Connection. He was in a movie that Sam Miller mentions called The Householder when he was really young. I know. I've been wanting to watch The Householder ever since I read Sam Miller's book. So I was thinking we watch it. I've tr I feel like I've tried what? to find The Householder. But that's been a long time. Let's, let's see. So let's look it up. Yeah. No, so, I would totally love to watch The Householder. So that's one we could watch downstairs. Yeah. I mean, the you know, Rohan, yeah. we'll get Rohan's review. Uh, but yep, yeah, condolences to the family of Shashi Kapoor, um, a great actor, great performer. I think that's about it for the Ask America Anything questions. We've got an hour of footage to edit now. To cut down to 10 minutes. Go, son, go. I think we'll try to, we'll shoot for 22. Edit, son, edit. I think I'll shoot for 22. All right, don't forget to tune in to the India Connection on Wednesday. Special thanks to everyone who has watched the last Wednesday's video, the India Connection video. That's the most views we've gotten on something since we did American Indian. American Indian. Um, it was just a lot of support. It was, it, it was felt good making that video. Our next couple are not going to be that great, probably. But we do have somebody coming in January to visit us. So we're going to give some Indians a tour of uh, Panama City. But in the meantime, thank you all for tuning in and just showing your support. And we've got uh, building a better me is the thing on the horizon. So I'm, I'm whittling it down. So uh, stay tuned for that. I think it can be useful for all of us trying to create a more creative, cross-cultural, and constructive individual approach to life. Feels good. Thank you for helping us on that journey. And for everyone who's supported on the India Connection subreddit, we're up above 170 now. So many thanks for that. Until next time, keep it creative, cross-cultural, and constructive, YouTube. Thank you very much.